Hello, I'm Gerard Saylor of the OD Fargo Public Library in beautiful downtown Lake Mills, Wisconsin. And right now I'm on the shores of Rock Lake here in Wisconsin, here in Lake Mills, which just recently thawed out. It's mid-March now and it's pretty th early thaw. We've had a mer very mild winter. And a book I just finished a few days ago is The Art of Fielding by Chad Harbach. Uh, Harbach's from Kenosha and this is 512 pages long. And there's several characters involved, but the two main characters are Henry and Mike. Uh, they meet at the end of an American Legion baseball game in northern Illinois one summer, right after Henry's high school senior year and Mike's uh, freshman year of college at Westis College on Lake Michigan in eastern Wisconsin. And Henry is a shortstop, and he's a phenomenon. He can field anything. He's smooth, he's fast, he's got a great throwing arm, and he's a scrawny little kind of guy. He's like 5'10", 125 pounds. But Mike is his big dude. He's like 6'3" with a forceful personality to match. Uh, very likable, very persuasive. He's the kind of guy who, who just makes things happen. And one of the things he makes happen is he sees Henry playing there and he says, hey, you're gonna play at Westage. And so he recruits Henry. He recruits Henry's family. He convinces the, the parents over the phone to do it. He calls up Henry's high school and gets the transcripts for, for Henry's career there. He convinces the admissions people at Westage. This is in the middle of August, you know, right before the semester begins that they're going to allow uh, Henry to come in and enroll at Westish. Uh, he takes the Henry's father over the phone and gets all the financial aid things figured out. And uh, Henry shows up there at Westish College, and the baseball team there for the past hundred years has been at best mediocre, and usually much worse. And Mike is sick of it after one year. He recruits Henry, and they recruit other people. And after three years of work, they're a conference contender. And during that time, Mike is, is Henry's guru. He tells him pretty much everything to do, because all that Henry does, he's a very shy guy. He goes to class, he does his homework, he prepares for baseball season, and he plays baseball. And every morning, Mike will call him around 5.30 in the morning and tell him to get up and go on his run. He runs steps in the stadium with a weighted vest. He uh, lifts weights, he does wind sprints, he does all this work year-round. And that's about all he does, and it's his, it's his whole thing. And it comes to Henry's junior year, Mike's senior year, when uh, Henry... Other characters involved too are the college president, who's about 60, who was dating Henry's roommate, male roommate. Um, and so there's this thing there about, well, this is the college president's first gay relationship, and then he's doing it with a student, so they got to keep it quiet. And then the president's 23 year old daughter, who got married when she was 17, never finished high school, comes back after her marriage fails. There's all these kind of other competing things going on. But really, what happened was I got about 270 pages in. And I realized there hadn't been one murder, one armed robbery, one beating, nothing like the kind of things I usually read. There just wasn't really anything happening. Not to me, anyway. There was a lot of baseball, but very readable baseball. I'm not a baseball fan, but I enjoyed reading about it. I mean, Hardebach does a good job like that. This is the kind of book, if you really just like the characters and the setting, and you want to see what's going on in their lives, there's not one big single point to focus on. Like in a lot of the books I read for crime novels and thriller novels, there's kind of one big event that kind of gets hinged on. And there's uh, several blurbs in the back of the book. One is by Jay McInerney that says, uh, like all successful works of literature, the art of fielding is an autonomous universe, much like the one we inhabit, although somehow more vivid. So if you're really into that, this is the book for you, because after that 270 page point, there's 100, geez, 203 pages in not really much happened. I mean, at a, at a point there, uh, Henry is uh, in a game, and he'd been error-free for 23 games. It was a streak. He was going to break the NCAA uh, record. And he's throwing the ball, and it just slips off his fingers a little bit, and a strong wind off Lake Michigan pushes it, goes past the first baseman into the dugout, and smacks his roommate right in the face, knocks his roommate into the hospital. And after that, Henry, whenever he, he, he can feel fine, his glove is perfect. When he gets the ball, he'll, you know, triple pitch, you know, put his glove. And he can't throw the ball. He's always afraid of throwing it too soft or throwing too hard or having it go awry. And uh, so everything kind of falls apart there. And Mike is hooked to uh, painkillers. He's, he's kind of getting by with this massive pain in his knees. There's barely any cartilage left in his knees and his ankles and his back is bad. And then he starts an affair with uh, college president's daughter, and then the daughter sleeps with Henry, and this is all this big, you know, college drama, you know, it's really only a few steps up from a high school drama, actually.
connection. And it's really just a lot of people kind of deciding they're at this end point in their lives where they're in their college career, they're at what seems to be the end of their baseball career, the daughter was at the end of her marriage, the president is at the end of like a lifetime of heterosexuality, and they're all kind of deciding what's going on and where things are going to go. And, you know, it's got a happy ending, but, you know, if you like that kind of book, great, but it just wasn't for me. But uh, The Art of Fielding by Chad Harbach, that's what it looks like. It's a lot of great press, a lot of great reviews. I'm Gerard Saylor of the L.D. Fargo Public Library in beautiful downtown Lake Mills on the shores of Rock Lake. And that's what's for